Okay. Hey guys, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. I know, I know, I know. But I'm back to it. Um, this video is going to be on uh, prepping for um, the Army's new BOC um, and just my experience with going to school. So I just got, I literally just graduated from BOC um, February 1st, 2019. Um, BOC, for you, for your, those of you that don't know, it stands for Basic Leader Course. And um, it's when you're uh, E4 in the military, in the Army, um, you have to go to this class in order to get promoted to a sergeant, which is the E5. Um, and it's always been around, but they recently changed it, um, I think September of last year. So I just wanted to come on here and give you guys an update and, you know, just give, you know, people information on uh, what to expect, how it is and things of that nature. Um, so it is, a, I think a 28, I think it's 28 days. It's not 30 days anymore. That's for one. It's not 30 days anymore. I think it's 28 days. Anyway, um, it's Monday through Saturday. Yes. <laughs> Monday through Saturday. Um, so you do work on the weekends. Um, but it's not a month long and you do get Sundays off. So that's a good thing. You also don't stay in the barracks. Well, at least where I went, we don't stay in the barracks. Um, we get to go home every night. Uh, we just have to report back to the class um, the next morning. So, this is going to give you guys a rundown of how it went. So, day zero is basically in processing. You go there at zero five. You have to be there at zero five, I believe. Yeah, zero five. And you have your packet with you. And the packet consists of your orders. Um, as your orders, profiles. Other paperwork, things you have to get signed by your chain of command um, in order for you to go. So they call everybody's name, they do a roll call, and everybody who name who's on the list goes. If your name isn't on a list, but you're still trying to go, you're like trying to do a walk on, they'll call you after they call um, call the people that's supposed to be there. And with the walk ons, if you're like a star MOS, um, they'll call your MOS first and then they'll tell you to come in. They'll check and make sure you have everything before you walk inside the um, inside the building. And if you don't, then they're going to send you back and get somebody else. Um, so, yeah, after that, they get right in. Um, you go in, you get in the line and this like it's, it's on a popper from there. Like you, it's on a popping. So, like it's. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> But so yeah, so you go, um, and then you gotta stand at at ease over a rest, and then um, the line goes up, and you go to this table, and you give each person the documents they're asking for. At the stations, they're gonna ask you for your profile, your uh, your orders, I believe, and something else. And then after that, after everybody's done. They're going to let you know, like, okay, hey, be back at this time, and then you're going to get started. So the first week is pretty much, like, I feel like the first week was, like, the hardest week because it's, like, you do everything within that week. Um, so um, after you you come back at the time, they tell, you, they tell you to come back, which is, like, probably, like, 8-something or 09, and then um, you do more in processing. Um, they give you counseling and everything on that, telling you what they expect from you and things of that sort. And you pretty much do that for the remainder of the day. And then once you guys are done with that, you get released. And then the next day is height and weight. So height and weight, they, uh, you come in at 0530. We well, have to be there by 0530. Um, and they, you get on the scale and they see how much you weigh. And then if you don't meet the army standards for that, you get taped. And then, so then you, if you, if you're, if you're good on weight, then, you know, you go sit in the classroom and wait for everybody else to get done. Um, but if you're not going to wait, you go on a different line 
and you wait to get taped. And then once you get taped, you do that. And then once everybody's done with height and weight and tape, they uh, say, okay, be back at this time. And then you start your first day of class. This is your first real day of class. And um, you just go through lessons. And the way BOC is now and how it differs from how it used to be, um, everything is really like, a, it's kind of like college. It's like taking a college class. That's at least how it was for me. So you sit in a classroom and they give you different uh, classes and lessons on things that you need to know as a leader. Um, and yeah, you just spend like an hour or so doing an activity or a certain uh, portion of the class on a certain topic. Um, and that's pretty much how I went. Everything was really, really uh, um, classroom oriented. So everything was like a PowerPoint presentation and things like that. And when we interacted, we had to do, so we had to do papers. We had to do, I, believe, I think it was two essays that actually counted towards our grade. And it was, and I believe it was another two essays that didn't count towards our grade. I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, so you do these essays and army style is different than, it's not, it's not drastically different from regular college style writing, but it's different. Um, so I believe it was like, you have to have 15 words per, a maximum 15 words per sentence or average your, uh, your paper had to average 15 words per sentence. Um, you have to have seven to 10 sentences per paragraph. Uh, you cannot use any passive tone. Um, you couldn't talk in first person. Um, unless it was like an essay asking you about your, uh, your opinion or something like that. But mostly you don't use first person. Um, there's, you know, how like regular college, there's like APA format, uh, and things like that. They don't have that. Um, that's pretty much the difference between college style writing and army style writing. Uh, but yeah, everything is way different. You don't do land nav anymore. Um, what else was a big thing? Yeah, you don't do land nav anymore. Um, but yeah, so you teach classes. So like, instead of like you going out and doing land nav and finding points and things like that, you actually, they give you a topic having to do with land nav, you have to teach that to the whole class. So like my topic was uh, how to determine the azimuth uh, using a protractor, which was really easy. So you basically just have to, you have to, first you have to know it, you have to, and if you don't know, you have to learn it. And then once you learn it, you have to figure out how you're going to give it to the class. And a lot of people made that difficult. They tried to do like, they overthought it. And I'm, I'm usually a person that overthinks everything. Like I, I usually overthink everything, but this, my, my topic was so simple. It was kind of hard for me to overthink it. So that was pretty easy. Um, what else? We had to do an informative paper on a certain topic that having to do with the military. And then after you do that informative paper, oh, excuse me. Ugh. Then after you do that informative paper, you have to do a, a presentation based off of that uh, paper. So you have to do a PowerPoint presentation. So you basically use your essay to, to put in slides and you're teaching that class to your uh your peers um they have you write a resume but that resume is not counted towards your grade they have you do drill and ceremony where you march a group of people you do uh so you just do basically like when you're basic you do that with the drill sergeants have you doing all everywhere i mean you're marching everywhere you have to do that with a group of people and you get graded on it um you have to do prt you have to give prt so like the preparation drills CD1, CD2, his stability, four for the core, things like that. You have to give uh you have to do that in front of a group of people. And you have to you have to be the instructor. And you get graded on that as well. Um but yeah, I'm I'm like all over the place. But anyway, after day two, after you do hide and wait and you do your classes or whatever, day three is when you do your PG tests. And um you, you come in at 530, I believe. That was the time. And you do your PT test. And then um you continue on with classes and then those i feel like those three days are the most important days like uh well actually the first yeah the first three days are like the the hardest days i feel like um because 
I don't know how y'all are, but when I take beats tests, I get really, really like nervous and anxious. And because I'm not, I'm not skinny. I'm, I'm a thick, tall girl. So height and weight always been like, cause you know, if for height and weight is really, yes, there's a regulation on it, but it's really depends on how that person interprets the regulation. So you never know how they'll take, you can like one person can be great. You know, you can be well under the next person. They grade differently or they test differently. So it's kind of hard to get like an accurate of where you are um, because it's different with everybody. But um, and then if you do fail one of those things, you get a second try. If you fail anything, anything within the course, you get a second try, um, you get a retake. And if you fail that retake, then you get dismissed from the class. So um, it's best to just, you know, try to do right the first time so that way you don't have to worry about it and then also if you do uh fail anything for uh the first time you won't be considered for honors so you can't get like a singles honor grad commandant none of that you can't get none of that um if you fail anything if you get counseling for anything if you're late if you're missing any piece of equipment you'll get a counseling for it and you won't get kicked out immediately but if you if you miss that same thing again then you're gonna get kicked out and that's not good to get kicked out of of school because that goes on your record and a lot of people can get kicked out of the army because they got kicked out of, of the basic legal course and plus it's just not good to have on your record just in general um they are very to they're they are the standard that's what i'm just saying that the the instructors are the standard which i think is a good thing because the army sometimes goes strays away from the standard um once you go up uh once you get past certain levels so having that was really good because you get that structure that should be in the military and they just they, it's just like it's showing you this it's, they're setting the standard for how they want future ncos to be so i like it i like the fact that they're strict um i like the fact that they correct you when you have things wrong or if you're doing something wrong i like that because it's it's good for you to know especially if you're going to be a leader of soldiers you don't want to be out there and you be trash and then your teacher shows us this trash and they're growing up into the ranks and then they're being trash because they were taught trash. It's just, you know, it's a good thing that they're setting the standard for future leaders and future soldiers as well. Um, but yeah, the whole experience was, it wasn't bad. The first week I feel like was the hardest week. Um, just like I told you, PC testing and hiding away is, I just always get nervous when it comes to those two things. But once you get past that, I'm telling you the class is a breeze. A lot of people were complaining about the essays and things like that. And you know, why are we writing essays if I went to the college? Like I was just went to college, which I understand, but you gotta think about it as a leader, you have to write a lot of stuff. Like if you wanna put a soldier in for an award, do your, a lot of us, a lot of NCOs write their own NCOERs, which is like, it's basically like your, your resume as, a, as a, a leader, telling someone what you did and all things you accomplished within a certain time frame. So a lot of times people write their own uh, NCOER. So if you write your own and you don't know how to write, you can do the most simplest thing, but if you don't know how to properly write it, one, it won't get recognized. They're like, oh, well, like if you say, oh, I just helped um, get weapons okay there's better ways you can word it to make it really like appealing and make it like oh okay whoa you did this like oh okay well yeah they deserve an award or they deserve recognition for that so if you don't know how to write that and you just write it bland it could cause a lot of people to either miss awards your nco nco you already get a, a low rating like it is it's just it's necessary a lot of people was complaining about it but i feel like it is necessary because people do like i look at when i begin certain emails or you know, certain, looking at certain things, it's just like, this is written poorly, like. With. So, I think it's a good thing. Um, it's a definitely good thing. A lot of people was complaining about it. I feel like it was good. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, you have your uh, uniform inspection. I would come ready. Because when I'm telling you, I've seen people with their uniforms crumbled. Like, it looked like they just grabbed it off the garbage can and just brought it up there. And it's just like, bro, like your uniform is jacked up like why is it crumbled like wrinkly like it looked like it was balled up and they just put on a hanger it last like right before like right before they had to come it was a mess um let me see what else um so yeah you had it on saturdays saturdays you don't have to get up for pt so that was lovely like <laughs> 
So you got up later. Oh, I loved it. Um, what else? You do PT there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. They have a, a, I don't know if all BOCs do this, but mine did. Um, they have like a cultural day where each person in the class pick a food that they want to bring, whether it goes towards your, like if it's a food from your culture or if it's just a food that your family likes to make and you, you want to share with the class. So actually, yeah, you have like a little culture day. That's usually like the last week of uh, of school. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of. What, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, we gave we pitched in money for a, a gift for our instructors. You guys do that. Oh, you have daily um daily responsibilities. So everybody has responsibilities. So mine was motivational uh word of the day. Um, so every day I have to give a motivational word and I have to say like what it means to me or, you know, just elaborate more on that word. That was, that was kind of challenging because I could see if it was like motivational quote, I could do that. But like a word, you got to find one word and elaborate on it. So that was kind of challenging. Um, you, so you have to, uh, you get a role as a platoon sergeant and then, uh, uh, a, a, a squad leader um people got roles as the student first sergeant and it was it was it would rotate every few days so it was just giving you that that experience being in a position of a leadership of a higher leadership they also they call everybody sergeants in there everybody i don't care if you're if you actually are a sergeant already and you just need the class or you're a corporal specialist whatever they you're all referred to as sergeant we're all equal in that class um what else? Um, I can't think of nothing else. I just feel like it was a overall for me though. It was a good experience. Like <laughs> I wish I I wish it was longer because like, I'm trying to go back to work. <laughs> I'm really not, but it wasn't bad though. Like it was it was pretty good. Um, it's different than what it used to be. Like I've said, but. Um, and I'm a very, very nervous person and over, I overthink a lot, but when I actually got in the class, like it was just, it wasn't bad at all. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, I made bonds with a few people and hopefully, you know, we keep in touch. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a good experience. I had a lot of fun. Um, what else? So, yeah, it was just, it was a lot of fun. But, um, but yeah, I will be coming back on here with more videos. Um, my next video, I don't know why I'm not going to on this video, but one of my, in my future videos, I will be giving y'all an update on life. Because I've been gone, the last time I filmed was when I was still pregnant. I was still pregnant, so, and my daughter's left me too now, so... Yeah, I gotta get, I gotta fill you guys in. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Get ready with me. Or I'm gonna just come on here and talk. I don't know yet, but yeah, it's it's well overdue, and I haven't filmed a video in so long. Y'all don't understand. I didn't move from overseas. Like it's just been it's been so much. So yeah, I do plan on coming back on here and giving you guys more things. And um, if you want to see more military videos or things about the military, let me know. So I'll do military Mondays. Today is Monday, so I was like, oh, let's. Military Mondays, let's talk about the military. And I'll just give y'all some of uh, my experience and kind of how what BOC was for me. Um, if you guys have any questions, if y'all want to see anything um, anything else in the future, let me know. Comment below, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, you know the whole ordeal. Just share, share, share. Um, I got so much, so, I got so many videos, y'all. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. I've been, like, okay, so I've been posting, but I have videos recorded. If that makes sense. And my laptop broke, so I plan on getting a laptop within the next few weeks. So that way I can edit those old videos and post those as well as new videos onto my uh, onto my page. So you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of back and forth, like so. Just don't be alarmed. I'm just trying to get all the content that I have saved up out there for you guys, so that way you guys, you guys can have um, just a lot, a lot more videos will be coming in. Um, so just let me know what y'all want to see. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> um, sorry for the wait. It's been long overdue. 
Um, I haven't filmed since December of 2016 and it's now January or well, February 2019. It's been a long time. So yeah, just don't worry. I'm coming back. I'm coming back with more videos um, and just more content so that way you guys can see. But again, thank you so very much for watching this video. Again, let me know if you have anything, uh, anything you want to add, any questions, just comment below. Thank you.